So if you've still got your free hit left, guys, it's probably one of the most popular weeks to use it right now. I'm using mine. I've hit the button. I've done a draft. Keep watching and you'll see it. It's awesome. Welcome back to Fantasy Manager Weekly. My name is Reese, and I have activated my free hit. Obviously, as we know, it is a blank game week this week, and I had pretty much been 99% tied down to this free hit strategy for a few weeks now. So here it is. I've actually hit the button. I've just done it, got it out of the way, and I've created a draft. Today, I will talk through the draft, some of the players I've targeted and why I've targeted them. And then maybe if you're on a free hit draft as well, it might be something that you can think about Hopefully this video will be helpful to you. If it is, please smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you are new as well. Liking the video really helps the channel out and promotes us throughout the algorithm. And subscribing gets you some lovely free content into your lives, Sundays and Thursdays. So this is the draft as it stands. And I've done it quite quickly, but there is a very small pool of players to really pick from. And some of them are really, really kind of obvious kind of first name on the team sheet kind of picks so we'll go from goalkeeper and then we'll work our way down i'll try and give you some numbers behind some of the decisions that i've made so first up sanchez in goal the reason i've brought sanchez back into the team the prodigal son returneth is because of that fixture newcastle at home now newcastle have been slightly more attacking of late i've noticed from watching games i haven't looked too much into the numbers but Brighton are a good defensive team. And for me, this is the kind of standout fixture defensively this week. Now, you could look across the fixtures this week. Crikey, is there only four? And say that they're all kind of decent defensively. I mean, Fulham are good defensively. Leeds just had a nil-nil against Chelsea. Brighton are good defensively. Newcastle don't score goals generally. West Ham are good at defensively. And so have Arsenal been historically this year. Aston Villa are obviously good defensively, and so are Spears. So you could make a case for all these games being nil-nil, to be fair. But you can't obviously pick 11 defenders. So Sanchez in goal because of the Newcastle fixture. We've gone for Dallas at fullback, Tierney and Cresswell. Just to talk to you about Dallas, obviously that Fulham game is a bit of a chance of a clean sheet for them. Fulham not being able to score goals at the moment helps. And Dallas is probably still the most threatening defender in the game, or at least up there in the top five, without a doubt. Clean sheet-wise, Leeds, okay, not great defensively, but they have just come off the back of a nil-nil against Chelsea. But to be fair, their goalkeeper was man of the match in that game. But yeah, Dallas is there just for his pure attacking threat, and we have seen him obviously hit double digits a few times this season, and I don't want to be missing out on those if it is this week. Tierney then comes in against... West Ham and I really like the Tierney pick and it reminds me of game week was a 19 when it, a lot of other people were free hitting brought Tierney in and he didn't play I think he was benched or injured or something so there's uh there's echoes of that but obviously I like Arsenal defensively I like Tierney as an attacking force if he plays because this is a free hit I've kind of got more than 11 players that I think are going to play so if Tierney doesn't start for example it's not a disaster because I got some decent players on the bench that can do a job i'm not really selling tierney to you am i let's have a look at tierney's numbers then. so we'll go to arsenal stats player stats over the season and we'll look at expected assists for example kieran tierney's number two for expected assists this season and for a defender who hasn't played a lot of games really i mean he's made 20 appearances okay so that is quite a few games but that's still good numbers 3.26 he's underperforming that but interesting to see back yako saka above him in expected assists 3.61 so he's an attacking fullback we like that Cresswell then comes in against Arsenal so these guys will be playing each other purely again because of his attacking potential there's always the chance of the clean sheet in this game I think it could be nil nil or one nil or two nil to either side but Cresswell is very likely to be involved in the goals if West Ham do score a cross a corner a free kick maybe potentially so chances for double digits there for Cresswell and we'll look at his numbers so he's only he's just coming off the back of a couple of 12 pointers there against Leeds and Sheffield United for example an 11 pointer there against Everton so obviously this guy's got it in the bag midfield Aubameyang comes in now Aubameyang is an interesting one I mean he's 
playing decent lately, but he's also missed games lately. So if you look, so he's missed this game here and this game there, essentially. And he's played 90 minutes on the other side. And you're paying a lot of money for this guy, but he did score a hat-trick there for a 20-pointer against Leeds. So it's an interesting one. It's a bit of a differential as well. And if we look at Arsenal's numbers again, in terms of shots per 90 minutes, again, Saka's above him as someone who I've got in my team who we'll speak about in a bit. But Aubameyang, 2.4, which isn't amazing shots per 90 minutes, especially for that kind of money that you're playing. So I'm kind of talking myself out of him here at the moment. And like I said, none of these players are nailed into their positions. If you look at expected goals, Aubameyang's second in the team, they're just behind Lacazette. Non-penalty expected goals, very similar. But then you look at goals scored, nine each for Lacazette and Aubameyang. Only the one assist for Aubameyang there. So a bit of a risky one, considering the amount of money you're paying there for Aubameyang. But he has just scored a hat-trick recently, and you would like to think that he could come back into some goal-scoring form here against West Ham. I think I maybe I just felt I had to spend that money somewhere. Saka's actually better than Aubameyang, a better pick than Aubameyang in that Arsenal team, I think. But if I've got both, then you can't really make that argument. So the jury's out for Aubameyang, basically. But obviously, he's got penalties as well. So that's quite a big thing. Well, I say a big thing. It's probably a small percentage, very small percentage. But he's in there anyway. Aubameyang's in. Son is in there as well as Bale. Uh, I feel like I don't really need to justify these two. Aston Villa... Lately, their defence hasn't been great, although they have kept a couple of clean sheets. Their expected goals this year is actually the worst of any team in the league. And I'll show you what I, I'll show you the source that I got that data from. So if we sort the league table here from January the 1st until now, goals conceded then, Aston Villa are doing okay mid-table-ish with 14 goals conceded. But if you look at the expected goals conceded, they're actually fourth from bottom. So it just goes to show how well Martinez has been doing keeping out those expected goals for example and we know that's true because of the points he's been getting etc but out of the teams that are playing obviously in 29 Aston Villa do have the worst expected goals out of all of them next up is Newcastle but I don't really fancy any Brighton attackers apart from maybe Pascal Gross who could be the ideal free hit candidate to be honest with you because you don't want to carry him but on any given week he could get you a goal or two then you have to go all the way down to Leeds then for expected goals conceded. So that's Son and Bale. Obviously, they can be explosive on their day. And if Aston Villa's defensive numbers have been dropping off, happy, happy days. Saka, we've seen a little bit of Saka's numbers there. If you look at Arsenal's numbers in general, Saka basically comes out on top on almost everything. So shots per 90 minutes out of the guys who play regularly. He's above Aubameyang. Expected goals, okay, he's below Aubameyang and Lacazette. And goals, okay, he's below Aubameyang and Lacazette. Assists, he's actually behind Smith Rowe and Lacazette as well as William. Smith Rowe is someone who I would like to bring in, but he probably would just end up on the bench just because of his price, I think, to be honest with you. So interesting then, if we sort this data from this year, Saka does basically come behind about me, actually, for everything bar shots per 90 minutes, and that's only 0 0.03 above. Bamford then is a no-brainer, although he did limp off in the game against Chelsea, which I've just watched now. Obviously, we'll wait and see what happens in terms of injury news. But if he is fit, he's in the team. And to be honest with you, if it's 50-50, he's probably going to be in my starting lineup as well. And I think if he doesn't play, he doesn't come on for Leeds, if you know what I mean. So that will just be an auto-sub. And I'm, all, I'm obviously going to be back in my bench this week to do well as well. Antonio against Arsenal. And again, interestingly, in the numbers, Antonio is just... A machine so if we go back to the entire Premier League and we saw all the players in the league by expected goals this year Antonio comes in second just behind Ilkay Gundogan if you go for actual goals okay his finishing obviously hasn't been as good he doesn't come in the top 10 but if you go for non-penalty expected goals he is top of the tree let alone game week 29 players he's top of the tree for everybody so Antonio then you got Gundogan and Sterling then Harry Kane who I guess you're not surprised I tell you, Harry Kane's obviously in the team as well. And then Aubameyang on top of the list as well. Ollie Watkins in the top 10, creeping in there, but he probably is someone who won't make it into my team. Bamford, Antonio, who we spoke about, and Harry Kane. Shots, shots per 90, expected goals, goals, assists. He's the absolute no-brainer in the team there, and he is going to be the captain. Looking at the bench then, Ariola, goalkeeper. And there's, like I said, in terms of team selection, a case can be made for playing any of these players over the players in the starting lineup and I haven't quite nailed that down yet but so I'll speak to you about these guys so Ariola against Leeds save points basically you're looking at there 
I mean, I could upgrade Ariola. The trouble is, where do I go? I mean, I can't go to Loris, who I'd like, because I've got the three Spurs players. And apart from that, clean sheets, it's quite hard to predict who's going to get them and who's not. But I could easily swap him out for someone like maybe Leno. I couldn't do Leno, could I? Fabianski. I've got the money, but it is what it is. Ariola's on the bench for now. Rafinha, great, great player there at Leeds. I've probably put him on the bench here because of Fulham's defensive form. But like I said, the argument could be made to play him over probably Aubameyang or Saka, to be honest with you. Dunk like Brighton's chance of a clean sheet. And Dunk is quite threatening as a player. Takes free kicks, etc. sometimes. And is obviously very tall. Good presence in the box, etc. And Jamal Lascelles, his form has been excellent for Newcastle. And okay, Newcastle aren't the best team in the league. But look at the numbers he's putting up lately. He started getting back in the team, speaking about how he wants to score more goals. He's scored two goals in the last three games with a 10-pointer, a 6-pointer, and an 8-pointer. So, again, there could be an argument to play Lascelles in front of Tierney or someone like that, for example, in this free-hit team. That's it for today, guys. Captaincy is on Kane. The vice-captaincy is on Aubameyang. would like to put the vice-captaincy on Bale or even the captaincy on Bale, but I don't want to have the same team. Do you know what I mean? Captaincy and vice-captaincy, just in case something out of the ordinary happens and the game gets postponed or whatever. Let me know what you think. Smash the like button if you like the draft. If you don't like the draft, leave a comment or dislike it if you want <laughs> and um yeah there'll be another video before the deadline probably a team selection video so thanks very much for watching speak to you soon don't forget to like and subscribe peace